So, very good morning to you. Uh, coming up to three minutes past six is the time. Uh, what will make America great again? If you want to give me a call, you can do so. It's 0344 499 one thousand. Uh, Donald Trump has been to hell and back, but still he shows great courage and he's very likable and a sense of humour, says Chris in Bournemouth. Um, meanwhile, Ruth says, James, you're a god for taking my call. Yes, Ruth, I am. Uh, 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Uh, do give me a call. Have your say. We'd like to speak to you. Meanwhile, I'd also like to speak to my guest who's live in the studio with me, Paul Britton, leading criminal defence lawyer, who has demonstrated his subservience not only to me but to you as well. Uh, we'll discuss why in a moment. Uh, if you're not watching on the telly, you can do so because you can find us on 522 on Sky, Virgin 606, Freeview 237, FreeSat 217, or via YouTube or the Talk TV app, go and have a look and see Paul, he's here. Good morning. Good morning, James. Uh, yeah, you are subservient, you know, you know why. You've, you've already pointed it out once this morning, but maybe you should... Yeah, so, so now, um, indeed, um, this is about tie wearing, because I know that you're a lawyer and lawyers love ties. <laughs> the tie is a thing of the past, other than for weddings, possibly, funerals, possibly, or fancy dress. And court. Obviously we go to court with a tie. Um, you don't have to. Yeah, we do, really. Um, otherwise, we, I've, I mean, I was thrown out of court once for being inappropriately dressed. Really? I turned up on my day off. And, um, but then, the you see, in court, you're subservient. It. You're subservient to the nation and your class. You're respectful to the court. No, it's not respect. <laughs> it's a nonsense. I did actually think this morning, should I wear a tie or not? And I thought, oh, yeah. But last month, I had a jumper on. You did. I was rushed last month. So. Yeah, last month you got admonished by my colleagues. Anyway, that's another story for another day. Uh, let's see if we can avoid that situation that's occurring right. to you today. Um, right, uh, we have to deal with the front pages. Of course, all the front pages talk about Donald Trump. Mm. Daily Telegraph, Trump under arrest. Uh, the Daily Mail, Trump's hush money plot to bury scandals. Trump in the dock, says the Times newspaper. Uh, I think my favourite headline on the, all of this is the Metro. Um, Donald in the dock. Uh, is what they say, but it's really sort of like Donald. Donald, mm. right? Funny. Uh, that story also makes the front page of Financial Times. Trump enters not guilty plea to 34 counts on day of drama in New York. Uh, the Guardian loves it. Trump pleads not guilty to 34 charges in hush money case. And there he is. The hair is there. Uh, the orange is there. The Trump is there. The standard red tie is there. The grumpy look is there. It's all there. Stony faced on the front page of the I newspaper. Trump the reckoning. The they say. Daily Star even has it. Bigly trouble, they say. <laughs> the most orange president of all time is... Well, there's a big contrast history. between the Telegraph and the Express. In, in the Express, he's very red and orange, and the Telegraph seems to have filtered him a little bit. He looks like... He does, but in the mirror they've picked the worst picture, and his hair looks like an absolute mess in the mirror. I mean, Maybe well it's done, an indicator man. on who's Trump-friendly and who's not. Um, yeah, no, 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 this is true. So, the mirror, uh, Trump in the eye of the stormy. I think that's quite a good head. You don't like that? <laughs> Oh, in the eye of the stormy. Yeah, no, come on, that's bigly. good. We got the, we done the bigly one. Yeah, we done bigly. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the star. Yeah. Shows how much you were listening. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the Daily Express, George to star in Grand Dance Coronation. We'll talk about him a little bit later on. Uh, just to the story though of Trump, um, can you just explain the difference for those who are listening and watching the difference between the US and the UK system in terms of how courts work and how political the system is? Well. Uh, in, 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 in England, we don't um, televise proceedings like this one's been televised. We do televise judgments. That's yes, a very new which concept. is a new thing. We saw yeah, that the other day. Yeah, and I was on Trisha Goddard's show talking about that. I bet we had, you were. We had the first one in the UK recently, um, and we had, uh, we, we've had many recently, actually. Um, but we don't televise the proceedings. Now, in the States, it is like a media circus. Um, I can understand. But is it a political circus as well? I mean, for example, we had this recent row here in the UK where certain barristers, uh, guess who, were trying to say that they shouldn't be forced to act um, for certain people. Because at the moment you have this, like, cab rank uh, process, which is you're, you're basically in a queue, you get picked, and, and you can't pick and choose in order that the justice system is... Uh, as fair and reasonable as possible. Otherwise, there were certain cases that wouldn't possibly be taken. And you certainly don't undertake political prosecutions, whereas in the US, well, 
you know, the, 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 the judges are sort of political appointments. Well, so, yeah, the cab rank rule in the UK is that, and it applies to barristers, not so much solicitors. Barristers have to accept the next brief that comes, just like a black cab would. So it doesn't matter if you've got to defend a rapist or a murderer, you just have to say yes and you've got to give them a good defence. Um, in the States, is, is it being politicised? Politi yes, I think it's politicised. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, I think it is. It is going to be weaponised against him. But I think it's a bit short-sighted because what Trump thrives on... I mean, it's made publicity. it more popular, hasn't it? Because this it is has. the narrative about Trump, isn't it? Which is, uh, I'm the outsider, I always he was, I'm still, I'm still the outsider. Of course he does. I mean, he's playing the part. It's yeah. brilliant. I mean, it, and the thing is... I don't care whether you like Trump or whether you don't. This stuff is absolutely box office. It's fascinating to watch him, his people, the entourage we're dealing with. It's got everything, this stuff. I, I don't know how it works in the States, but in, in the UK, once you're charged, mm. we have the Contempt of Court Act that kicks in. So making statements to the press... I mean, I know that he was asked and invited to make comments, and he refused. He just completely ignored the press. So I wonder if it's the sim a similar thing there, that if he makes any statements now, it could prejudice the final trial and he could be in trouble again for that, which is actually probably a more serious offence to the ones that he's on at the moment, which are these felonies about falsifying his business records to pay what they're calling hush money. Um, yes. and, and, and the way he's described it or disguised it in his book is that he's paid for information. So it's a business transaction and it's of benefit to the business. In this country, he would have to go on to prove that how it benefited and how he was acting in the best interest oh, of his companies. To be fair, it, did, it probably did benefit his business. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's another thing, exactly. How, how's your business benefited? Uh, I became president. I changed the tax rules. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll That'll come back. That <laughs> Come on, that was a straightforward piece of analysis there. Um, I will uh, come on to some more stories with you in just a second. However, I think you and I need to take a couple of calls. Uh, Stan's in Liverpool. Stan, good morning. Good morning, James. Good morning, Stan. So, um, what will make America great again, in your opinion? Not to have Donald Trump as re-elected as president. Why you got him there in the first place? But then what, what do you say to those who have telephoned in and said that he would make it great again? No, I don't think so, because, as one, his wife is Russian. Two, some tower was paid for and financed by the Russians. The papers he took from the White House, where did they go to? Did he copy them and give them to Putin? No one knows. He had a meeting with Putin. So, well, so there is there is a lot there is a lot of chat there, and obviously, he, he, funnily enough, Stan, he's not here to defend himself, and you're, you're making these these comments and, and 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 thoughts there. But then, on the other hand, okay, so in your view, not Trump, but then Biden. I mean, if you Trump amazingly didn't have a war whilst he, he was in office, and everybody said that he was a warmonger, and, and look at Biden. I mean, what a mess. Trump wanted to uh, stop arms getting sent to the Ukraine. Who would benefit by that? Only the Russians, if America stops supplying them. And other countries, the only one who gain is Russia. His wife is Russian. She could be a spy for all we know. She could you know, be. know the way that Russians work. So why did they allow him to become president when his wife is a Russian? Well, I don't know. They, 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 you know, they had their free choice, and that's point. I mean, let me ask Paul. I mean, should we have a? Should we? Do we have an issue with who his wife is? No, I mean, right. and uh, and the the system in the states is 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 very good in terms of who they allow to become presidents. I mean, you have to be a, you have to be a national, but even if, even if Trump was convicted of a crime, he could still uh, run for president. So mm. that doesn't affect it. And who he yeah. chooses to marry, I mean, I don't see how that's going to impact on his his ability to be a good president and put America first, which is what his rhetoric is. It certainly is. Uh, making America great again. Uh, let's, you and I, uh, take a little trip, because, uh, well, I mean, it's heading towards summertime and we need to go to Brighton. Oh, thankfully, we don't have to. Rodney's there. Uh, Rodney, morning. Uh, good morning, James. Good morning, Rodney. So Beautiful glasses. Have you all seen what I mean? I love your glasses. Thank you very much indeed. Um, f I, if only I could brand them, package them up and sell them as the Max Specs, I'd, I'd make a fortune, Rodney. Yeah, that's good enough, you know what I mean? Might, might be a profit, why not? Well, exactly. Sadly, I can't and I haven't, but there we go. Um, tell me, uh, what will make America great again, Rodney? I respect the, the world order in a way that NATO, right now we've got Finland, and we have the biggest crisis right now, understanding what 
the country is about and take on the culture wars. They need to stop this culture war stuff and realize that America is great. Look at the people America creates, the big winners. You know what I mean? It's like we just had a few days ago the people are going to the moon. Yes. From America. Na Na NASA. Na Na NASA. NASA. They're going to yes. send, yeah, yeah, they're going to send, you know what I mean, five Americans to the moon. Yes. I mean, that's what America is about. And concentrate on that. But, concentrate but on the science. has America been ruined by the fact that it's, 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 been torn apart by um, the, these political divisions. The, the Republicans and the Democrats simply, I don't know, can't see eye to eye. They can't get things done. Uh, their society is being pulled apart. There's political correctness gone crazy. Woke tactic uh, activity, and yet they still have guns everywhere. It's a mess. Yeah, absolutely. It's polarization. You know what I mean? One day you've got the Christian right, you've got secularism. So, so right. is Trump a good or a bad thing? Should he become president again? I think I think it's a bad thing. I think oh. the geezer I think the geezer is done for. Yeah. The geezer is done for. I mean, I think on that bombshell, we'll leave it there, Rodney. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, going to Tony in London. Tony, morning. So, what will make America great again? Rodney says um, the geezer's done for. Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, um, I, I'm I'm not sure it's not great already. Um, it's the premier oh. military power in the world. True. It has the reserve currency and the largest um, economy. True, so, but it, 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 it has that. issues, though, doesn't it, Tony? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's no argument there. But if you suddenly get, make something great, what, define great. What, what, greater. How could it be greater? Yes, how could it be greater? Uh, well, they could get rid of their guns and, and sort out that problem. The fact that, you know, the amount of... Um, yep, the shootings yep. that take place just horrendous. They do need to we, sort we, out the technology companies and try and regulate them to stop them ruining our use. So, so it's already great. We're just talking about making Their it debt. greater. Yeah, they've got quite a lot of debt as well, uh, according to Paul. So um, over a trillion dollars. Trillion dollars of debt, Tony. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no argument there. But it's not already great. Yeah, but it is, it, is a, it is a country. Do you, do you think it's a country in decline? Oh, it's a country and, in decline. And, oh, controversial. Uh, and uh, and other countries are are growing much much faster than uh, than the states. And China's China's economy is due to um, accelerate and exceed the United States um, GDP by twenty thirty. So. I don't. I don't know if America is going to remain great. Perhaps the rhetoric, if it was to be more factual, would be, keep America great. Oh, keep it. What do you make of that, Tony? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's perfectly possible. Yes, keep America great. Keep America great. The problem is that it's not such a great uh, campaign slogan, is it? <laughs> um, Tony, uh, thank you very much indeed for your call. We'll leave that there. Uh, Paul, we're going to come back to you in just one moment with your stories from the papers. That's next here on Talk TV. Good morning to you. 19 minutes past six of the time. Going through the papers with Paul Britton. He's a leading criminal defence lawyer. Uh, let's turn to your stories, Paul. And we start with this other big story today, which is all about um, how we refer to Camilla. Uh, it was the Queen Consort, and then the coronation's going to happen, and then the consort's going. It, uh, some people seem to be a little bit upset about it. Are you? No, I think it's great. I, think, I mean, it was always coming, um, and I think it's good that the King is now um, and Buckingham Palace is embracing Camilla as Queen. No, I, th I think that's absolutely right, and I think also um, I, how we refer to them, I think, is um, is important. And I think I think that the coronation is the right time that we move away from this dreadful consort word, mm. and, and we're just it's Queen. Yeah, I mean, front, front and he's the third um, king to use um, Charles uh, in front and centre of the invitation that's gone out to the coronation is 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 King Charles III and um, Queen Camilla. Uh, and I think it's it's fantastic, and I, th I think the public will get behind it as well because they know that um, that they should support our king, and and it leads on to another story, doesn't it, with Prince George. Uh, it does indeed. Uh, Prince George. So what's he going to be doing at the coronation? The Daily Express making a lot of a lot of food on this. Prince George is getting a star role at the coronation. It's uh, He's only nine. I don't want to be rude. Haven't they picked the wrong one to do it? I mean, where's Louis when you need him? 
Because <laughs> Louis, Louis is the one who did the, the hands and the things and the eyes and the whatever. And the, yeah. yeah, he was the one who stole the show last time. Well, it's it's a role normally reserved for you know boys that are between twelve and fourteen. He's nine, oh. so it's going to be a step up in the papers. The way that they've they've positioned it is Charles wants to encourage. Um, the next generations, the future kings, to understand the importance of the monarchy mm. and their role. Role, I can't help but feel it is a, a subliminal message um, to Harry um, in the States and his failure to understand and grasp the importance of monarchy. Um, I, I'm being told in my ear, mm. and this is incorrect, my producer just said, no, it was George who stole the show last time. No, it wasn't. It was... No, it was Louis... I don't know. Prince it might, Louis. It might have been George, actually, but... No, it wasn't. OK. It wasn't... No. I'll just be subservient and sit it was, here. No, it was Louis who put his hands over it. So at the Queen... At the Queen's 70th... When the planes went over the when top the on the balcony, the top, yeah. Somebody will come back and just confirm that I'm right. No, no, he's... No, no. What? The, the, the producer suddenly got his Italian tank out. That's the one with six reverse gears. <laughs> uh, and, and suddenly James is right. Meanwhile, talking of mistakes, uh, in response to Stan from Liverpool, uh, says this one, Melania Trump was born in Slovenia, not think, Russian. Yeah. Uh, also, if he wants to talk about spies and influencers from Russia, then we need to know, look, look no further than Hunter Biden. I mean, there's, there's a thought. Uh, Biden's not without his skellies in the cupboard, is he? Are you asking me? Yes. No, I listen. American politics. I, I, I was right, talking you to your you colleagues don't. before we came on. It's just I try to avoid all these Trump stories because okay. it's just boring, isn't it? It's like OJ Simpson on steroids. All right. Let's let's talk about a story that really has uh, made people very um, uh, vexed, um, which is this whole "what is a woman" uh, discussion. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Where do you, where do you stand on this, and and what what's the story today? The Equality Act refers to sex um, and gender, and it uses those terms interchangeably. Campaigners are saying those two words have very different definitions. What Rishi Sunak, Prime Minister, is saying now is that he wants to protect biological women from being exposed to men who have undergone a change or have a, a gender certificate to say that they're now women from entering their safe spaces, um, hospital wards, toilets... Isn't part of the refuges. problem with all of this, and, and, and this is where it becomes difficult, is that if you are going through the transition process, mm. um, uh, dealing psychologically with, with the difficulties of that, at what stage are you able to uh, conduct your life in the, um, in the shape or form, if you like, that you are transitioning to? Because, of course, when you're at the early stages, arguably that's when uh, the prejudice is perhaps stronger. Uh, or would you say this overrides everything and therefore your biological sex is what should divide which um, facilities you can use and which sports you can enter? The, the law is there to create certainty. It's not always fair. It's not, they're not courts of morals, they're courts of law. And to create certainty, we should be helping the, the, the lawmakers um, to, to provide... But that, that has to, to be politically driven. So, there so, are those, well, so Keir Starmer, Keir Starmer says 99.9% .9 of people uh, you know, who, who are called women don't have a penis, and then there's the 0.1% you know, or whatever it is do. Uh, and people have got themselves in a right old mess about this, uh, in, including uh, myself, uh, because it is so complicated. But I, I, I think I sort of take the view... I mean, for example, I really struggled with the whole idea of sport, but then I, I took the view, well, if you've been through puberty, then, frankly, you probably have to stick with your original sex because otherwise it becomes dramatically unfair because of the physical differences that you have, for example, even though uh, you may be transitioning to another, um, mm, another, right. another gender. But, I mean, you, you said when, when does the balance tip where you can start living the lifestyle of the, of the sex that you're becoming? You know... A man becoming a woman is not going to have a menstrual cycle. They're not going to have children. So, yes, but there are quite so, a lot of so, people. There are quite a lot of women who don't isn't have it, James. It. Okay, yeah, but hang on a second. But then you know there are, there are women who don't have a menstrual menstrual cycle, and there are women who you know you, you you can you can start to pick out all those sorts of issues. And if you're not careful, then you end up with all the um, 
all the negative language that was used when uh, we talked about people's um, sexuality. Mm. And you go back 20 years and, and we saw the discrimination that took place in society then against uh, gay people and all of that stuff. Uh, and and it, it was pretty awful. So, look, I think this has got a, 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 a way to run. Having said that, I think there's... Um, uh, I think there's a, a good deal of progress in terms of how to protect different people and their gender and understand the difference between sex and gender, which is probably something that most of us never even gave a second thought. Uh, meanwhile, um, what about uh, criminals being frog-marched into docks? Well, yeah, this is the, uh, the recent case where um, the accused refused to come into court, um, Cashman refused to come into mm. court um, for his sentence in, um, because he felt that the court had become a media circus. Apparently the uh, CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, when they had their guilty verdicts by the jurors in that case, ten, ten jurors to two, mm. um, uh, cheered, we are the champions, which... Um, which I, I don't know. Why I mean, they my did that. my view on that is that I don't care if you are caught being uh, <coughs> if you are guilty of something, you really should have to face uh, not only the people that um, you you have wronged, if you like, but also you should have to face the judge in your mm. sentence. So the options are frog march into court, yes, or put a camera down in the cells. No frog march into court. They yeah. should be in there in person. Okay. The end. Um, how many divorces were there in uh, last year? Uh, as a number, I don't know. Uh, nearly 120,000, which is up 11% since 2021. Um, it's good news for lawyers. Good news for lawyers. Uh, what was the largest uh, divorce settlement? Oh, 52 million. Uh, incorrect. 554 million, okay. uh, which was uh, settled in the British courts to Princess Haya bint Hussein against the Dubai ruler Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Um, and um, what is the average age uh, of divorce for men? 45. Spot on. He's all over it. Look at that. The expertise is there. <laughs> One in three. I minutes. haven't even got time for the squirrel nutter story, which is the rampaging squirrels that are driving uh, a woman nuts, invading her kitchen and stealing her food. That can be found in today's Daily Star. Uh, meanwhile, um, TikTok being fined £12.7 million pounds for child data law breaches mm. as well, uh, which is, I'm sure, a story that we will return to uh, at some point. Paul, if people want to find out more about you and what you do, where do they go? They can go onto the website, britontime.com. Um, or in, email us at info at britontime.com. Thank you so much. That's Paul Britton, leading criminal defence lawyer. Thank you very much indeed for joining us to review the papers here on Talk TV. When